What's going on everyone? It's me Marco from PhoneDog.com. Let me start off by saying I'm sorry for not keeping up with the Google Glass Challenge videos. There's been a lot, and I really do mean a lot of stuff coming into PhoneDog's offices, and there's just been so much stuff going on, and I've been trying to keep up with all of it, but let me go back to the Google Glass Challenge. Now I'm going to stop keeping track of numbers because, eh. I think that's a little weird and uh, we'll just do Google Glass challenge and challenge videos from now on. But this time around, we're going to be talking about the applications that accompany Google Glass. Now, this one runs its own software, but in order to get the best Google Glass experience, and I'm talking not only connecting to your phone via Bluetooth, but I'm talking about perhaps sharing data, sharing contacts, downloading Glassware via your phone and not via your computer uh, or Google Drive you have to use an application. Now there's two applications currently available, one for Android and one for iOS. They do have different functions, but perhaps the same idea. So this time we're gonna be putting these two applications head to head and find out which operating system will give you the best experience, either iOS or Android. So stay tuned and check it out. Google Glass is an incredible idea. Maybe it's a tad out there in terms of price, usability, I don't know, social acceptance, but it works and it feels like a product from the future. Yet in order to make Google Glass work, you have to have an independent network and something connected to your phone. There's no SIM slot or mobile data unless you have a ridiculously really expensive plan with one of your carriers. I don't see anyone paying over $20 per month just to have Google Glass sitting on their face. So Google has made an application called My Glass that was originally available for Android, but now it's available for iOS and Android, and it allows your device to connect via Bluetooth and download glassware, update preset contacts, and do even a glass screencast. Now one giant misconception of how Google Glass connects to your phone, you have to have Bluetooth. It's not that big of a deal now since every single phone now has Bluetooth, but there is no magical Wi-Fi or uh, NFC technology here it's just Bluetooth and that's how it connects. Now on the Android application you do have the ability now to share the internet connection without going through your data carrier network which means you don't have to turn on your mobile hotspot it will use Bluetooth to stream over data. Uh, now this kind of works for some of the more current Android phones I think it's Bluetooth 4.0 and up that allows this data transfer but it is sort of a bypass kind of like a hack to go through Bluetooth instead of going through a very expensive data tethering plan. Now the iOS app does not have that function so you have to use tethering to have your iPhone connect to your Google Glass and you actually have to add it in as a Wi-Fi network. Apart from those features, the app is not very useful. It's almost like a one-time setup deal for Google Glass, and that's it. You really don't have anything else. You can put contacts. You can do a screencast, but kind of just shows you what Google Glass is looking at. Uh, and apart from that, that's about it. So there you have it. It's a brief overview of the Google Glass app on iOS and Android. Obviously, if you want the best experience, you have to get Android to have the data sharing without paying the enormous fee. Uh, unless you're on a super cheap data plan, that's the only way you'll be able to share data. Well, thanks for tuning into this video. My name is Marco Hanna, and I'll see you guys in the next video.